All right, guys, welcome back to Patterns of Inheritance. This is the second video in a series of this chapter. Uh, this is the section on dominance. If this is your first time here, you missed the first section on Punnett squares, so please go back into Google Classroom and find that video. So quick review. Uh, in Patterns of Inheritance, we learn about dominance and recessiveness. Dominant means that this trait, this gene or allele, whichever word you want to use, this is what's going to be expressed in the phenotype. Recessive means this is a trait that will not be expressed. It will try to remain hidden. Uh, everyone has two genes, or I should say two pairs of the same gene, two copies of the same gene uh, from each parent. So if one parent gives you a dominant one, another parent gives you a recessive one, the dominant one is the one that you are going to use every time. Uh, recessive will only show up if it's the only one you have. If mom gave you recessive, dad gave you recessive, then the recessive trait will show. Example is blue eyes. Blue eyes are recessive, brown eyes are dominant. If mom and dad both gave you blue eyes, that is the only way you can have blue eyes. Otherwise, brown will always win over blue. So that was the basics. Moving on to what we call codominance. This is when both alleles if you don't remember the word allele, allele is just a really fancy word for gene, all right? Like homologous genes, mom gave you one, dad gave you one. We, we use the word alleles. Codominant is when both alleles are dominant, but they still disagree with each other. But they're still going to be expressed because that's the rule. Dominant will show up. Dominant will be expressed. An uh, example here for cow would be Brown fur, or I'm going to have hair, not fur. Brown hair is dominant. White hair is dominant. They both show up. In this case, this cow got brown and white. An example for humans would be blood type. If you don't understand blood type, I have a whole chapter on it in anatomy and physiology. You'll see that maybe next year. But quick rundown. We have these specialized proteins called antigens. They have something to do with your immune system. Your immune system will recognize that this belongs to you because it has the correct antigen. Right? But we have different kinds of antigens. Type A blood means you have what doctors call the A antigen. Type B blood means you have what doctors call the B antigen. So if you're type A, you have A. You have type B, you have B. It's easy. Type O means you don't have the antigen. So O looks like a zero, right? So zero antigens on your blood. And if you're curious about uh, positive versus negative, that will be a whole separate set of alleles on a separate Punnett square. We're not going to worry about that right now. But same rules, you know, positive, negative, whether or not you have a certain antigen. Uh, but with codominance, if one person, one parent gave a type A, and another parent was type B, and remember Punnett squares from the last video, if mom gave an A and dad gave a B, they're both dominant, so this child will have A and B both showing up in the blood. We would call this type, type uh, AB. Both traits show up, and you have both, which is great for blood transfusion because then you would recognize a type A blood transfusion, you would recognize a type B type transfusion, you'll recognize AB transfusion because that's what you have. You would even recognize O because O doesn't have any antigens, so your immune system doesn't have to worry about it. Another example, example would be flower color. Uh, flower with red petals, uh, red being dominant, and flower with white petals, white also being dominant in this species, the offspring could get red from one parent, white from the other parent, and red and white both show up. You clearly see red, you clearly see white. That's co-dominance. Co meaning they're both there, the co-workers, both working together. This is not to be confused with our next word, incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance, both alleles remain dominant just like before, except neither of them will be fully expressed. Right, co-dominance, they are both expressed. With the flower, you saw red and you saw white. With incomplete dominance, you're not going to see red or white. Right? They're going to blend together 
and make a third option, right? Some kind of mix in between. So the example, the one I just said, actually, a flower of red petals mates with a flower of white petals, and the red and the white for incomplete dominance blend. They make a pink. That's why we call it incomplete because it's, the red is not completely shown, the white is not completely shown. All right, so it's incomplete. Incomplete dominance. Now at this point you're probably wondering, why is this going to be any use to me? How can I use, ever use this in my life? Um, can I make money off of this stuff? Actually, yes. Uh, many breeders, animal breeders, dog breeders, horse breeders, that kind of thing, will actually use this knowledge to try to come up with some kind of rare blend that they can sell for even more money. One of my favorite examples would be the Chocolate Lab. Lab, short for Labrador Retriever. Uh, we actually only have two basic kinds of labs. You got the black lab and the yellow lab. Um, black being a dominant fur color and yellow also being a dominant fur color. If a black lab made it with a yellow lab, they both passed on, no, one passed on the black and the other passed on the yellow, then the offspring would be what we call chocolate. The brown, sorry, the black and the yellow would blend into a brown or chocolate in this case, creating a chocolate puppy. As you can see on the Punnett square, one parent only had a capital B being black and the other one only had capital Y being yellow. Right, remember we use letters to represent the genes now, the, the alleles. So one parent can only pass on the black, one parent can only pass on the yellow and they end up blending together. In this case, every puppy will always have be chocolate. Now, I said this is kind of a rare thing. People try to make money off of it. So why can't I play this system? Why can't I have two chocolate labs mate and just keep pumping out chocolate labs over and over and over again? Now, why would that, wouldn't that make them less rare? Why, why can't they be their own breed? Well, the reason is there's no such thing as the chocolate allele. There's no chocolate gene to pass on. It's a combination, an incomplete dominant combination of black and yellow. So taking a look at this Punnett square, if we had one chocolate lab, that's a lab that has black and yellow, and we bred that with another chocolate lab, then you would only get chocolate labs half the time, 50% of the time. In order for you to be your own breed, officially your own breed, you would actually have to have a chocolate lab and a chocolate lab reproduced to have chocolate labs every single time. All right? If you cannot make a chocolate lab with every single puppy every single time, then you are not your own breed. All right? Because these two chocolate labs also have half a chance of getting something that's not chocolate. 25% chance of a black lab, a 25% chance of a yellow lab. So they will never be their own breed. Therefore making chocolate a bit more rare and breeders can actually sell them for a bit more money. All right, moving on to the next thing, we call this sex linkage. And by sex, I mean, you know, are you male or are you female? I'm not actually talking about intercourse. Um, sex linkage is a trait uh, it can be directly linked to either the X or Y chromosomes. If you remember from a previous chapter, we talked about chromosomes and we talked about how men and women on the 23rd pair of chromosomes have a difference. Right? We have X chromosomes and what we call Y chromosomes. Men have an X and a Y. Women have two X's. Right? Which means your mother only had two X's, she only had X's to give to you. Your father had an X and a Y to give to you. So if you are male, your father gave you a Y, and that's why you're male. Your mother only had X's to give. So even though you're male, you still get that female X chromosome. Right? So that matters. You have the female genes inside of you. Women, your dad gave you his X because you know he got an X from his mom. Your dad, he gave you his ex, and your mom only gave you an ex, so you got two exes, you're female. This is what we refer to as sex linkage. Something, some trait 
on one of these chromosomes, an allele on these chromosomes. Uh, let's see. If a trait is on the Y chromosome, women will never have this, which is why women will never have male sex organs because that's basically all that is on the Y chromosome. It's a very small chromosome, not much information on there. But if it's on the X chromosome, anyone could have it. We all have X's. So it actually does matter. Example would be uh, the ability to see color. Now, the ability to see color is on the X chromosome. And if the X chromosome, uh, what I mean by the ability to see color, I mean you see the color red, you see the color blue, you see the color green. These things are on your X chromosome. If this X chromosome is mutated, then you will probably be colorblind, see the world black and white, or some maybe missing one of the colors. Now, if a male has the X chromosome uh, mutated, then he is definitely colorblind. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But if the female has a mutated X chromosome, she may not be colorblind. Take a look at this. She has shown in red, she has one mutated X chromosome, but in black, she still has a good X chromosome, meaning that X chromosome is still telling her to see in color. She can see in color. This is what we call a carrier. And this is why sex linkage is kind of important here. If males have it on the X chromosome, they definitely have it. If women have it on an X chromosome, they don't definitely have the problem. And this is why sex linkage is different. Between, this is how men and another reason men and women are different. That's not to say that women can't be colorblind. If both X's are mutated, then this woman has no choice. Like she has nothing to work with. She will be colorblind. Uh, cool little factoid here, though. Uh, because women have two X chromosomes and both of them are working fine, then she would have two X's telling her to see in color, twice the processing power for color. It turns out women actually can see more shades of color than men can, which is one of the reasons why uh, you hear people complain, uh, either women complain that men don't care about the, the clothing options or uh, men complaining that their wife cares too much. What it comes down to is someone holds up a shirt and says, which one looks better? And the guy is probably going to say they both look the same. And the woman's going to say, no, no, no. These are clearly two different shades of red. And, well, turns out the woman actually can see two different shades of red where a man would probably only see the one if they're uh, similar enough shades. All right, moving on. Multiple alleles. Sometimes you're going to have to cross more than one trait. All right? Every time we've gone upon a square so far, we've only done one trait at a time. You know, what color are your eyes? That's one trait. You know, how tall are you? That's another trait. You know, what color is this dog's fur? That's a trait. Sometimes we want to know more than one trait. Maybe we want to know how tall the offspring will be and what color the eyes will be. Right? That's two different things, but we want to know both of them. So my example here, dad is tall with blue eyes. So the alleles I'm showing is a big T, little t. He means he's heterozygous. That's a word we learned in the last video, meaning it, they're different, they're mixed. One of his parents gave him the dominant tall gene, and another parent gave him a recessive short gene. And he has blue eyes. Both parents gave him recessive short genes. Mom is tall with brown eyes. She's also heterozygous for her height, big T, little t. And she's heterozygous for eye color, big B, little b. One parent gave her brown eyes, the other parent gave her blue eyes. Brown eyes are what's showing. What we want to know is, what is the chance the offspring will be tall and have blue eyes? All right, I'm not looking for every tall offspring. I'm looking for every tall offspring with blue eyes. If it's a tall offspring with brown eyes, I don't care. We don't count it. All right? And there are two ways to do this. All right? There's the hard way and the smart way. All right? The hard way 
I'm only showing this to you because you're probably going to be looking for stuff up on the internet or something and you might come across this. I'm telling you right now, do not do it this way. Right? But if you come across it, looking stuff up on the internet, I'm showing it to you now so you understand what this is talking about. You are looking at one really big Punnett square. This is, let's see, one, two, three, four by four, that's 16 squares. Right? 16 Punnett squares, that's a whole lot of work. Right, we used to have four. We added one more trait and we jumped up to 16. This is what we call exponential growth. If we wanted three traits, four traits, this Punnett square would be insane. Right? This is why this is the not smart way. But showing it to you anyway. So what we're going to do is a weird combination. We are going to take the first, uh, starting with, I believe this was dad with the blue eyes. Right? We're going to take the first allele for height, big T, and the first allele for eye color that little b, put them together across the top. And then the second allele for height and still the first allele for uh, eye color. All right, we only switched the uh, height one. And now we're gonna do that again, but with the second allele for eye color. So first with the capital T and with the second little b. And then the lowercase t with the second b. I know that was complicated. If you need to back up and look at that again, just look at the underlined letters. It may, it'll help you out. And then we're going to do the exact same thing, but with mom. The first alleles for each trait, then the first, the second and first, and then the fir uh, first and last, and then the second and last. And now we're going to put them all together. And as you see them filling up, I'm just dropping down mom and dad both gave in the first one I'm, we're looking at mom and dad first gave the uh, big T's mom gave a big B dad gave a little B so we got TT big B uh, TT big B little B that first square is gonna have a child that is tall with brown eyes right. we don't care about that one what were we looking for we we're looking for tall with blue eyes so we're gonna ignore all the tall brown ones, we're going to ignore all the short blue ones, we're going to ignore all the uh, combinations that we're not looking for. We just want tall and blue. And these are phenotypes, not genotypes. We can have a bunch of different genotypes. You can see that up there. Genotype being, this is what the gene looks like. We're looking for phenotype, this is what the body looks like. So each one I just highlighted is going to be a tall, it doesn't matter if they're homozygous or heterozygous, with blue eyes. In this case, they're all homozygous because that's the only way to get a recessive gene. And what we end up with is, let's count up the highlighted ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, out of a potential 16 blocks. That's six out of 16. Let's simplify that down, three eighths. All right, that's easier to work with. If you prefer percentages and decimals, I already did that for you too. It's just 3 divided by 8, or 6 divided by 16, you'll get your same answer. And you end up with uh, 0.375. In order to turn that to a percent, you just multiply by 100, or move the decimal point over twice. And it gets you 37.5%. That was a pain in the butt. That was a lot of work, a lot of setup. I said there are two ways, and here's the smart way. All right, ready for this? Two traits, two Punnett squares. Nice and easy, right guys? Right. You're going to do a nice, easy Punnett square for height and a nice, easy Punnett square for eye color. And then it's just like the last video. So let's backtrack. I'm going to back up a little bit. Look at the numbers again. We are looking for either 3 eighths or we're looking for 37.5%. Right. Remember those numbers, 3 eighths or 37.5%, whichever one you prefer, fractions or decimals, remember that number. All right. So this is going to be a few more extra steps, but easier steps, all right? In my opinion, anyway. So typical Punnett square for height, both parents drop down the big T's, or one with big T, little t, big T, little t, little t, little t, all right? And we were only looking for the tall ones. That is three out of the four, or 75%. Hold on to those numbers, those aren't the answers yet. Let's do eye color. 
and we get big B, big B half the time or little B, little B half the time. And we were looking for blue eyes, little B, little B. So half the time, one half of 50%. I wanted to know what are the chances of someone being tall and blue eyes. Really easy, guys. Here's the hard part. Ready? Multiply them together. Yeah, that's it. Grab a calculator. Right. Show you. If you prefer fractions or decimals, I don't care which one. I'll show you fractions first. Ready? Three-fourths time one-half. It was three-fourths of the time that you'd be tall, one-half of the time that you have blue eyes. Right. Multiply the numerators together, then multiply the denominators together. Three times one equals three. Four times two equals eight. Three eighths. That was our fraction from last time. All those big 16 boxes with all the different random hard to remember combinations. All right, we ended up with three eighths. Yeah, we just did two very easy Punnett squares and multiplied them together. That's it, three eighths. If you prefer decimals, multiply them as well. You know, remember, you gotta take those percents and move the decimal point over two spaces first. All right, you gotta turn it into a decimal first. 75% times 50%, that's 0.75 times 0.5. Get a calculator, Three point, uh, 0.375. Turn that back into percent, you just move the decimal point over twice, back to where it was. 37.5%, just like last time, super easy. And I'm not even asking for both. Whichever one you are more comfortable with, fractions or decimals. Right. Previous tests, multiple choice options, I have actually given both. You know, the answer option was three eighths or thirty-seven and a half percent. Right? You had both there, so whichever one you like to do, it was there. Right? And that is it for the different kinds of dominance and multiple Punnett square stuff. Uh, again, this is the second video in a series. Please keep an eye out for a third one uh, dealing with other things such as family trees. All right. Have a nice day guys.